welcome back to Illuminating the Unseen. Today we continue our series about Indigenous and Black people's histories at the Old North Church during the British colonial period. I am Jamie Crumley, the Research Fellow at the Old North Foundation. Today we will think together about how race was socially constructed in colonial Massachusetts. If you are familiar with how sociologists theorize about race, you might know that in their 1986 book called Racial Formation in the United States, sociologists Michael Omi and Howard Winant pushed against the dominant belief which emerged in the late 19th century that race was biological. Instead, Omi and Winant argued that humans socially constructed the idea of race. In response to Omi and Winant's findings, historians have demonstrated that race is both socially and historically constructed. In other words, historians who study race argue that over the past several hundred years, people have consistently redefined what it meant to be white or a person of color in different ways. The purpose of creating race is to empower some people while disempowering others. Through our primary sources today, we will engage with the story of Beulah Speen. Beulah Speen was a mixed race woman who was married by Old North's assistant rector, Reverend James Grayton, in 1767. Bean emerged in archival records for the first time when she was born on May 12, 1743, in Natick, Massachusetts. Natick is a town 25 miles southwest of Boston. Beulah's mother is listed as a woman named Lydia. Her father's name is unknown, and her race is not listed on her birth record. As you can see, this document requires the race of a non-white person to be noted. Therefore, if this was the only document we had about Beulah Speen, we might conclude that she was not a person of color. It is curious that Speen's birth record failed to note her race because the Old North Church's marriage records overtly stated that she was not a white person. As I look at these records, I wonder, how does a person over the course of 24 years gravitate from seemingly being a white person to becoming a free mixed race person. Beulah Speen's appearances in the archival record offers us a fascinating case study about the social construction of race in the colonial period. Her 1767 marriage at the Old North Church to Saul Rogers, an enslaved black man, allows us to consider how sexuality and gender also played into the social construction of race in colonial Massachusetts. Furthermore, her moves from Natick to Boston and back to Natick allow us to see how her desire for a sense of community and her religious beliefs factored into how the people who knew her thought about her race. Before we continue, let's contend with this odd term that appears in Old North Church's marriage records that is used to describe mixed race people. Beulah Speen married Saul Rogers on March 13, 1767. He was a black enslaved man, and she is listed as a free mulatto. The word mulatto originated in the late 16th century. In Spanish, it literally translates to young mule. The term likely refers to the hybrid origin of mules. The connotation of this word is that mixed race people were close enough to Europeans, but somehow also derivative of Europeans. The word intended to discourage intimacy between people who were perceived as belonging to different racial groups. At this point in Boston's history, the only way that Saul, a black man, would have been able to marry Beulah is that they were both non-white people. Although the sentiment this word evokes is one that I hope we push against today, I want us to consider that maybe this word allows us to think broadly about what Beulah Speen's racial identity might have been. Our first clue into her race is her birthplace, which is Natick, Massachusetts. In 1651, Natick was settled by an English missionary named Reverend John Elliot as a praying town. As a minister in a praying town, Elliot worked with indigenous ministers such as Waban, who was Massachusetts, and John Speen, who was Nipmunk. 
to encourage indigenous peoples in the region to conform to Puritan beliefs and behaviors. Eliot oversaw the translation of the English Bible into the Algonquian language. This 1663 translation of the Bible was the first translation of the Bible that was printed in North America. Before he died in 1690, Eliot ordained Daniel Takawampant, an Algonquian man, to lead the church. After Takawampant's 1716 death, John Neesman and Thomas Waban Jr. led the church. Afterwards, the New England Company sent English ministers, Reverend Oliver Peabody and Reverend Stephen Badger, to serve as ministers in Natick. We do not have records that tell us that what happened to Beulah Speen between the time she was born in Natick in 1743 and her marriage to Saul Rogers, an enslaved black man in Boston in 1767. Unfortunately, her name only appears in the archival record through the records of her birth, marriages, and later her death. However, we can speculate about some of the intervening details of her life. Based on her surname, she might have been a descendant of John Speen, who was an early minister among the praying Indians. As we can see from her birth record, she was one of a few Speen children who was born in the early 18th century in Natick. We can speculate that someone might have disapproved of the relationship between her parents because she is the only child for whom two birth parents do not appear on this page. Perhaps she left Natick in her teens or early 20s. Maybe she found more stable employment in Boston. Perhaps she was eager to join colonial Boston's black community. Maybe the efforts of Boston's Church of England community made to share their faith with black and indigenous peoples reached her. As a mixed race woman, the people who encountered her certainly knew she was not white, but they also likely treated her with greater respect than they would have other free black women who were new arrivals in Boston. We cannot know what factors led her to choose Saul Rogers as her spouse. We can only hope that they were bound by bonds of deep love. Perhaps like other people of African descent in the colonial period, they thought that their marriage could somehow change his social standing. We cannot know the motivations for their union because we do not have any writing from them about their relationship. We also cannot know why Beulah decided to return to Natick. We know that she returned with her new surname, Rogers, but likely without Saul. In Natick, she was married again by Reverend Stephen Badger. This time she married a free man named Nicodemus Gigger. Through her relationship to Nicodemus Gigger, she returned to the community of Black, Massachusetts, Algonquian and Nipmuc people who she had left behind more than a decade earlier. This community likely included people who identified as Christians, people who practiced traditional indigenous religions, and people who eschewed from religion altogether. In Natick, Beulah made a new life for herself as Gigger's spouse. They named their first child who was born on August 22nd, 1777, Daniel Speen Gigger. Daniel's name preserved her maiden name, a name that was so important to Natick's history. They had at least one other child before the 1790 United States Census. On the census, the head of household was named Nicodemus Giga. We know that no members of the household racially identified as white because the census taker indicated that no white people lived in the home. However, all four Giga family members are listed as free. These records about Bula Spine allow us to see a few things. First, they allow us to see that free people of color traveled regularly in colonial Massachusetts. By so doing, they forged new social connections Second, the records allow us to see how scraps of archival evidence can help us to piece together a story of race and faith for women in colonial Massachusetts. 
Finally, the records allow us to see that in the colonial era, ideas about race were not stagnant. All we can ultimately know about Beulah's race is that the people at the time did not think she was white. Perhaps her lineage was mixed, black, and indigenous. Perhaps she was indigenous and European. Perhaps she was black and European. Perhaps she was some combination of all of these identities. Such was the nature of life for people who lived between empires. Thank you for watching this video. Please check our website for some resources to learn more about the idea of race as a social construct. And don't forget to go to Natick Historical Society's website if you want to learn more about Natick's history. How does Beulah Spean's story help you to think differently about the social construction of race in colonial Massachusetts? As always, please feel free to share your thoughts in a comment below this video or contact me directly.